Good morning, everybody. Tony, it's great to have you here this morning. Uh, it's great to be here. You, along with our moderator for the day, Leith Greenslade, have been really uh, the earliest champions on elevating the level of dialogue around integrated development. And certainly, both you and Leith have been champions uh, right from the very beginning of FHI 360's uh, integrated development initiative. So, again, it's a real pleasure to have you here early this morning on, on a Monday and to have a tremendous <laughs> uh, response also on a Monday morning. So, thank you. Um, and Tony, I know you're well aware of this, but I thought just to sort of context for folks here in the room that may not have the history on FHI 360's engagement, I just want to take one minute to give you a little bit of a background. And so, you know, for FHI 360, over the last uh, decade, <clears throat> we really began to increasingly recognize that the emerging technological and economic and demographic shifts uh, in our world were playing a significant role in creating more sophisticated human development challenges. So whether that was is uh, global climate change, uh, rapid urbanization, the growing youth bulge, these are just a few examples of the issues that are forcing us to really rethink how we address uh, increasingly interconnected development uh, issues. And so at FHA 360, we stepped back and we began asking ourselves, well, shouldn't our programs uh, be as interconnected as the challenges that we're working on? And over the last two years, we've really begun exploring a hypothesis that essentially asks, does one plus one equal three? Uh, or in other words, does intentionally integrating the design, delivery, and evaluation of programs have the potential to deepen our impact and really truly transform lives? Uh, and as part of exploring that space uh, of integrated development, we've convened a number of public gatherings. Tony and Leith were at our first one two years ago at the Harvard Club, uh, where we began to unpack and really to better understand this huge space of integrated development. Because when I think and when I talk to people about integrated development, it can mean a hundred things to a hundred different people. So there was a lot to unpack there. We've also created a, a suite of tools uh, that will help us to think and act in a more integrated fashion. Uh, together with PACT and a couple of other organizations, we helped to form a global coalition called LOCUS. In fact, if you go to locus.ngo, you'll find out more about this really exciting coalition. Uh, and then we began developing and collecting an increasing body of evidence around the power of integration. And I think we've gotten to the point where we're really feeling that, that the evidence is showing that integration can work in a variety of settings and combinations to really justify more routinely considering it when addressing human development challenges. So Tony, I'm wondering, what is USAID's current thinking around integrated development uh, from a policy and a funding and a program perspective? And then, if you wouldn't mind helping us to understand from your perspective and that of, of USAID, what are the challenges and where have we made progress? Well, thanks, Greg, and it's great to be here. And um, I think to back up, as, as you were saying, um, I think this integrated development, this is, this is a, uh, a concept whose time has come, mm -hmm. and it's been great to have FHI 360's leadership on this, and I think with the advent of the SDGs, we really have a framework uh, for taking this forward. Um, I think it's something that we have to realize it's, it's not necessarily new. I think as development professional and practitioners, we've always understood that development's not sort of a haphazard collection of siloed programs, but it requires a systemic approach. In the 80s, you know, we had sort of uh, rural integrated development, we had cross-sectoral programming in the 90s. Um, um, but, and, and as you said, you know, unpacking it requires some definition and some clarification. We often confuse it with collaboration or coordination. Uh, even when we think about how we apply the term, it can be a cross-cutting theme like gender, or it can mean putting together actual technical sectors in, in the programming. Um, from USAID's perspective, so last, uh, on a policy perspective, uh, last fall we uh, rolled out a new uh, vision for ending extreme poverty. And uh, it was something, we took a very um, holistic view, uh, looked at it from, from the complex and multidimensional uh, issues and, and, uh, that, it, that it requires. Um, and it recognizes that people just don't look at Healthcare, apart from education, apart from you know food and agricultural production, but there's uh, there's connections and intersections amongst all of those, and we've also you know we put out a gender policy again with integration as a key theme, uh, resilience policy where we looked to integrate and layer and sequence our humanitarian programming with our long-term development, something that's uh, I think increasingly uh, really important 
in this environment of increasing humanitarian uh, crisis. Uh, even at the World Humanitarian Summit uh, just, uh, just recently, you had a strong focus on the nexus between development and humanitarian. Uh, our democracy rights and governance uh, policy also had integration as one of its core development objectives. And so from a policy perspective, we're, we're trying to go there, we're, we're trying to push it. And yet we have constraints. And I think many folks in the room probably realize the constraints on our budget and the way in which our accounts work together. We have earmarks, we have initiatives, we have directives. And so that really um, uh, makes it difficult for our folks in the field to think creatively uh, and how to, to put a package together. Um, also, frankly, just sort of our incentive structures and the way we're organized does not lend itself to this. I mean, we have technical bureaus in Washington that, you know, basically are responsible for delivering on particular results in their technical sector. And that's the way, even when you think about it from a human resource perspective, uh, that's the way our incentive structures are set up. And so it makes it difficult um, for folks in the field to say, you know, I'm delivering on health, but I'm also delivering on governance, and I'm delivering on, uh, on nutrition and, and other things uh, that go outside of that. And so our own structures make it difficult. Right, right. Um, yet there are missions that really are, are, uh, are doing a good job. I mean, you have um, our, our Tanzania mission has an actual development objective that puts together education and health funding with the objective of empowering women and children. So not going to just be able to see if they're being successful on that by the indicators on, on health and education, but also how well it's doing on empowering women and children. Um, you had our, uh, our mission in Kenya combining funding from our water directive with funding from Feed the Future uh, to develop the Kenya Integrated Water Sanitation and Hygiene Project. Mm -hmm. um, and so in addition to improving irrigation and agricultural yields, they're also explicitly looking to devolve management of the water programs to communities, which is a governance objective. So you're really starting to hit uh, lots of different dimensions of development at once. Um, but again, there's, as I said, there's constraints. And I think the other, uh, the other challenge I would point out, I think which will get a lot of uh, airtime and I hope conversation today, is the challenge of measurement. Like, how do you deal with measurement and looking at measurement in an integrated fashion? But the SDGs do give us some framework to be thinking about that right. and, and challenging governments and, and all of us as actors in development to be focused on that. Terrific. Well, speaking of the SDGs, Tony, I, I, you know, so the international community has been working now for the last couple of years in establishing the, the goals, and, and that's really exciting, everything from, from marine, protecting marine life to global climate change and health. Uh, so, uh, and when I think about it, it just screams integration. Yeah. And for those of you who might not have seen, uh, David LeBlanc uh, does a has a fantastic article where he does a network analysis and just shows you the interconnectivity of the SDGs. And so I think it was really a terrific amount of learning from the MDGs into yeah. the SDGs. So as you, as you look at the, at the SDGs and as, as having been the Sherpa and really engaged on this very deeply, what role do you think integrated <coughs> development you know, will play in assisting communities and governments and, and funders to more successfully achieve the SDGs? Well, look, I look, one of the evolutions of the SDGs from the MDGs really is integration. Yeah. The SDGs um, force all of us as, uh, as those that are working to drive development forward, whether it be governments, aid agencies, UN agencies, uh, INGOs, private sector, to look at how to make progress on the different dimensions of, de of development at once. Mm -hmm. Especially, at, at the very least, not backsliding on one dimension as we're making progress on another. And so the, the idea of the linkages and integration amongst the framework was really one of the evolutions uh, from, and one of the key ways the SDGs are different from the MDGs. And so when I look at it, I look at it um, as a sort of manifesto for integrated development. I mean, the other thing that's very important about the SDGs is the political commitment that it represents. Yeah. This was a bottom-up process, you know, three years in the making, um, that was very open, inclusive, transparent. Secretary General called it one of the most inclusive and transparent processes in UN history. And so the ownership, uh, it really reflects what governments feel like they need to, to uh, provide uh, for their citizens, mm -hmm. and they own that. Um, and the fact is, because it forces us to, to try to think about how to make uh, progress all at once, it really does represent a political commitment to try to do our best to integrate those dimensions as, as we do development. Um, it creates a context for governments, really, to look across their government agencies 
as to how they come together and think about it. And, and it will be challenging. Um, it's interesting, when you think about the MDGs, you could also, you could think about three of the MDGs had to do with health. You sort of went to the health ministry, you knew where you were going when, when you thought about where leadership, uh, where leadership was based. With the SDGs, it's a whole of government, not just a whole of government, it's a whole of society approach. Um, we recognize that the aspiration of the SDGs even go beyond just what the resources of government has. And so it really is uh, an organizing principle, and we would hope to use it as such, like we use the MDGs, mm -hmm. uh, to bring everybody on the same page and create a, and mobilize action. Uh, but I think it does it in a way that really forces us to think about integration and take integration seriously right, uh, right. to make that progress. <clears throat> So really, I guess we can think of the SDGs as a tapestry for challenges to think and act differently. Yeah. So, so I think that's going to be one of the big challenges. That when you look at a national government, or our own government, we're, we're, we're defined by the different departments or ministries, right? And so if you're, you're interested in food security, yeah. how do you bring together all the elements, say, in, in Nepal or Uganda? What, what is you say doing to sort of facilitate that more holistic thinking with, with, at the national government level? Well, one thing that we did, in, uh, one thing that we did immediately, actually, upon an, as, adoption of the SDGs was to actually do a um, survey of our missions so that to, to force them to, to hear what countries themselves are thinking about and how they're thinking about integrating um, the SDGs into their own planning. And I think you'll see a lot of different models. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you'll see different models that governments take. And I think it will be, I mean, so first off, the, the SDGs are universal. So the U.S. government as well has to be thinking about how it applies this domestically. And I think you'll see, you'll see interagency um, sort of uh, efforts. You'll see offices in a prime, coming out of a prime minister or, or a presidential office as well with someone in charge. You'll see different models, I think. Um, and you'll see different ways, I think, in which they get integrated into development plans uh, at the country level. Um, at the same time, uh, I think you'll see uh, what, what we would hope to do is to stay abreast of that and to help share uh, lessons back and forth about what's working and where the challenges are. Uh, I think from a USAID perspective, the way we're looking at support for SDG implementation with the, with the countries in which we're partnering is really to help build their capacity to be able to carry this out and carry it forward. And so we're going to have to be very attuned to where the gaps in that capacity are and where the overlap is with the, uh, with the aspirations, with the strategies that we have mm -hmm. in pushing forward mm -hmm. uh, on the development landscape. Uh, and I think that's the tack that we'll take. Right. right. Okay, so Tony, you've got a large lens on this on this topic and SDGs and integrated development. Give us some insights. Who in the who, who should we be talking to? The folks in this room who, who are really moving the needle on this from a government perspective, a, a donor perspective, practitioner perspective. What, who's really catching your eye? Well, there are there are some countries that are sort of first movers. Um, so so one thing that's great coming out of the SDGs is that you do have this sense of. Um, momentum and ownership because of the inclusive nature of the, of the process up to now. Um, you see a country like Colombia, which really has already taken, the, uh, taken it quite seriously and in integrating it even into their own budget that they've put forward, and they're looking at where the data is um, all along the lines of where they're trying to measure. Um, I attended a gathering in Mexico, for example, where they had all their cabinet ministers uh, come together, interior as, w uh, as well, and, and thinking about what data they have and what they need to do around governance and things like that uh, to be able to make progress. I think NGOs are really um, a place uh, where there's a lot of innovation going on, um, uh, where you're testing and piloting in terms of the measurement as well. How do you think about to measure what, what this will look like uh, in measurement? Because uh, I do think one of the, the key areas that we'll look for innovation on is around the data. Um, I think the official architecture for the SDGs, uh, in which we measure uh, progress on the SDGs, uh, you know, will we'll capture some of what progress needs to look like on the breadth of those goals and targets, but probably uh, leave those who look for a more nuanced view a little frustrated. And so we're going to have to look to create partnerships among governments, among civil society, among NGOs, among private sector, frankly, that gives us a fuller picture of what progress looks like on some of those places of the SDGs. Um, and some of those places that are newer, uh, places like Goal 16, the things that are captured there around governance, where that was not part of the MDGs. And so how do we make sure we get to some uh, standards that are internationally accepted and how we're thinking about what 
how we measure what that progress looks like okay. as well. All right, terrific. Well, we're almost out of time, unfortunately. Um, so, and I know Tony's got to run off to the White House for a meeting on the SDGs. To talk uh, about SDGs. So very there appropriate. Um, so, but Tony, let me just ask you one last question. Uh, so, the purpose of today is really how do we move to the how? Right? Mm -hmm. We've got the SDGs, we've been unpacking it, but now really people, when I listen to what they're asking is, okay, how do we do this? So as we start to engage on what I think is going to be a fantastic series of conversations today, what's your advice to participants? How, what should they be thinking of? What should they be cognizant of as we go into our, into our full day of conversation around integration? So I think one of the most important things uh, to, to keep in mind, and this was actually continued something that we had to be mindful of even as we were um, developing the SDGs and negotiating around it, was that it's not just about coordination and collaboration. Those mm -hmm. things are important. Those mm -hmm. things get us started. Mm -hmm. uh, those things bring us to the table together and those things you know, help us think about. But it really is about putting the pieces together. And that means breaking down some mindsets and that means frankly challenging some of our own assumptions and, and being able to listen and see where our particular technical expertise or our particular program, specific though it may be, and where we can look at attribution going from here to there, yeah. also has impact that have ripple effects. Um, you want to make sure it's not undermining progress on something else, but actually if you can put it together with some of those er other areas, you might be able to uh, increase impact overall um, in a much more holistic way. And so it's not just about coming to the table and coordinating and sort of looking where things align, but it really is about where the connections are and where they integrate and how you have to bring that mindset together. Terrific. So Tony, thank you. Thank you. Wise thank words you as always. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the work that you all are doing in leading this. Thank you.